As an alternative to that, what we can do is we can hit the comma key to go into our light box. I'm going to scroll, uh, go over all the way over here to the right where it says spotlight, and you're going to see 128 and 256 clothing. Let's go ahead and double click the 256 clothing. And if you're working on a small resolution like I am, double click this divider over here and you can actually see them. I'm going to hit Z to bring up our spotlight. And remember, if you want the basics of ZBrush or how Spotlight works, you can always go to my YouTube channel, type in Spotlight, ZBrush 2019, what's new playlist, will have all sorts of cool stuff on the new Spotlight functionality we're going to be using, as well as my ArtStation page. If you want to go into the 2019 what's new, click up here, and then you've got a bunch of videos in here, uh, some of those which will be talking about the new Spotlight. But anyway, what we're going to do is use Spotlight in order to project geometry to get a tank top on this person. Now, we're going to make a new tank top, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click over here to turn the eyeball off, or just turn the eyeball off over there, um, and then we'll click the human again, the human body, and let's put a tank top on him. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over here into this section. Again, if you want to move this over, you can just tap so that none of them are selected, and then just grab in the middle of this ring away from the orange one, because the orange one, the orange ring will move this around, but the outside here, you can just scooch this over, and then you can open up this little divider over here, and then you can just kind of place this where you need to. So in order to get a tank top, what I can do is I can go grab one of the tank tops, I can pull it over into my screen, I'm going to take this scale here, and I'm just going to click and drag on this widget to kind of scale this up. So we've got this position in our scene here. We can also take this opacity and just click and drag it to the left so we can see a little bit better our person behind there. Uh, so basic functionality for the spotlight is you can do Z to turn this off and bring the widget back. So when you're in widget mode, you're moving these things around. When you hit Z, that leaves this here, but we can move our object now uh, behind this thing. If we do Shift Z, that turns it off. Z turns it back on. So we're gonna hit Z one more time and now we can move our object back behind that spotlight. First thing I notice is this tank top's not really fit to him. So the cool thing about Spotlight is I can hit Z and I can go over here and there's this little quick select, little recycling arrow looking thing. Click that and then with that selected I can go over here and I can touch any one of these and update this. So if I can, if I want to go through here and just start trying on different clothing I can go through and just select it and you know going through here swimsuits and I can click on this one. Okay this tank top that we chose a little bit better suited for his body type. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, reposition this. Uh, again, moving this orange ring around will move the spotlight widget, so if you want it out of the way. And then around in this empty area of the ring, that'll allow you to move this around and also like, you know, scale it up and move it. Uh, alternatively, you can also hit Z, and then you can move your body back behind here. So essentially what this is going to do is project geometry in this shape. So I'm going to hit Z one more time, and down here at the bottom there's a snapshot 3D. Go ahead and click that. Hit Shift Z to get rid of our spotlight. And now we have this geometry. Let's go ahead and turn on this little paintbrush over here. And you're going to see it's going to turn on Colorize. And you're going to see that also added some red in here. That gave us a poly group if we turn on our poly frame here. Uh, wherever it's painted red, it gave us a poly group. And that's going to be really helpful because if you hold down Control Shift with our Select Rectangle and click on those red points and then Control Shift drag in our document uh, to invert that visibility, now we have holes where the arms need to go. And think of this as like sewing between the front of the clothing, the back of the clothing, and the sides of the clothing. So now what I can do is I can go into here to Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. And if you want to get a little faster at that, go in here to the ZBrush for Ideation on my YouTube channel or on my ArtStation page, ZBrush for Ideation. And you can set up things like custom menus so you can very quickly go in here and just choose Delete Hidden really quick. So you don't have to dig through all these menus. But I'm going over here because we're kind of uh, demoing. So we, again, we have our clothing selected, just like we had last time when we made our one uh, by scratch. And then we have our collision mesh. If you want to make sure if you move this mesh or, you, or you're starting new, um, you can turn collision volume on. Or if it's already on, just hit recalculate. And that'll ensure that you're recalculating back to this collision mesh. Uh, we're also going to get into this later too, but you can also up the resolution if the collision of your object doesn't seem to be that accurate. So we have our mesh shirt selected, we have our body showing that's going to be our collision mesh. We're going to go ahead and again, we're going to do contract in the Z direction. Again, X, negative X to the left, positive X to the right, positive Y to the top, negative Y to the bottom, positive Z front, negative Z to the back, and by contracting this mesh in the front to back direction, the positive and negative Z direction, which we you know go in here and you turn these on and off, that will allow us to make sure the shirt goes through and just snaps to his body. We also turned off gravity 
because I don't want this shirt pulling down to the ground as it's trying to connect to his body. So we're going to go ahead and run the simulation here. There we go. And then we can stop the simulation either by uh, clicking stop simulation or just tapping in your document or hitting escape or hitting spacebar. So here we go. We have our tank top on here. If we go into solo mode, you're going to see we have this is okay geometry. Uh, that stitching along the sides getting a little stretched. And then again, we have okay geometry in the back. These corners right here are a little bit raggedy. We can clean that up using the, um, you know, some previous functionality we talked about in the previous video. But in the meantime, if we go into solo mode here, let's go ahead and move out uh, some of these points. We want to like widen these straps. These got a little thin as we were moving stuff. Uh, also, we need to make sure we're in X symmetry. Uh, so if I go in here to geometry, Modify topology, do a mirror and weld across the X, and then hit X to go into X symmetry, which is basically toggling transform, activate symmetry in the X direction. Again, X is left to right. Uh, so we can go through here and we can start widening these straps. So in the previous video, we made the straps smaller by using the pinch brush. But now we're going to make them a little bit wider. And again, we're, we're stressing this geometry. The geometry didn't look great. We're going to clean that up in just a second. We're essentially just kind of fine-tuning this a little bit. Now, if I was to Z-remesh this right now like we did in the previous video, it would kind of try to build in that aliasing. So one more time, you could, you could do this. You can go down here to Deformation. Uh, and since we're going to rebuild this anyway, you can just take this Polish by Features. Uh, a feature is a crease or a polygroup, and we actually have both. If you want to keep the front and the back separate and the stitching separate for some reason, feel free. I'm going to hit Control w to make it all one polygroup here. And then when I do a Polish by Features, it's going to run a nice general polish. If you really want to polish it, uh, turn over, uh, turn on this open circle, and that'll give you a different algorithm that'll really polish. But in this case, I'll keep it closed circle, and I can just polish this, and you're going to see it's going to clean those lines up. If there was detail you wanted to keep, again, like we did last time, you can go down here to the Masking menu, turn on just the open border, Mask by Features. If it's high enough resolution, you may not see it really masking that much. You can go in here to Grow Mask, Control tap to invert that mask, and then you can go up here to Deformation, Deformation Polish by Features and just polish those border edges just to kind of smooth them out. Uh, we also don't need this poly paint on anymore. We don't need to see that red, so I'm just going to turn that paintbrush off. And now, you know, if this is generally the shape you want to see, and if you again, if you need to fine tune this, just feel free to go in here with your move brush. But that's looking okay. Well, here's another thing too. If you want to go through here and smooth this manually, you can just hold down shift. However, you may notice that uh, when you go down and try to smooth the border, it doesn't really work that well. If you hold down, if you go into the brush menu and you hold down shift and go down here to the smooth brush modifiers, uh, and make sure you hold down shift because this is when you hold down shift that selects the smooth brush, and that gives you uh, these options here. So hold down shift, and you're going to see min connected is set to three. Set that to one, and now you can smooth these open borders. It's actually a new brush that's in ZBrush 2021. You can hit B S for brush. All the brushes that start with S, which include smooth, and then there's a new smooth cloth. So essentially, smooth cloth is that smooth brush with min connected set to one. So I can go through here and kind of just even this geometry out so zero measure doesn't build that triangle into the final result. So if I'm ready here, I can go to geometry. We'll go ahead and turn on polyframe so you can see what it's doing. Maybe grab skin shader four. And again, uh, it's at you know 15,000 points. We can try half adaptive size down again. The lower this is, the more even quads it's going to give you. If you wanted to build in geometry for folds or anything like that that exists, you can have that up. And then we'll set zero measure. Get nice new geometry. If you want, you can uh, keep hitting half, or you can hold down Alt and keep hitting half with a different algorithm and see uh, how low you want to go. This is actually a pretty stellar result. I'm liking this a lot. So let's go over here again like we did last time. We're going to go into geometry dynamic, so geometry, dynamic, subdiv, turn on dynamic, that's going to give us a smooth preview. We'll turn that down to one, so it's like we subdivided it once, but not really. We can turn dynamic off and on, shift D to turn it off, D to turn it back on, and then I'll go over here to the thickness, and we'll turn off solo. And again, if you're just joining us, I guess I can explain, uh, this is the thickness here, so that's going to give us that kind of fake thickness in between these polygons, offset at 100 is going to make the original mesh on the inside and it's going to offset outwards only. Offset at negative 100 is going to make the outside the original mesh and then the inside is the simulate or the dynamic mesh. And then if we do on uh, zero, it's going to split the difference and kind of do 50-50 on both sides. 
So this time, let's let's do this. Let's do offset of 100. So the original mesh is on just touching the body, and then everything else is inflating outwards for the dynamic thickness. We'll go ahead and turn this down here. So we'll go back here, and we'll turn on the startup material, or in your case, matte cap gray. And again, we have X symmetry turned on. Go ahead and feel free to like use your move brush to go and fine tune um, anything you need to. And now you can start just like we did before. Let's turn off contract. We can go ahead and hold down control with mask pin. We can mask this middle area out. Control tap to blur it. Control tap, control tap the object to blur it. Control tap in your document to invert that. And now we can do like maybe an expand in the Y direction just to give us some more uh, density or some more wrinkle area in the shirt. However, again, there's not a whole lot of actual geometry here. It's, it's a pretty low res mesh if we turn this uh, dynamic off. So what we may need to do is let's go ahead and hit control D or hit this divide key, and that'll give us more geometry. So now, um, and in fact, if you want to re-snap it, just hit contract in the Z, run the simulation, and that'll go ahead and snap it to the body. And then one more time, now if we do you know, mask pin in the middle, you see that mask is a lot sharper. Control tap to blur it out uh, on the object, control tap in the document to invert that. And then again, maybe do an expand in the Y, and then maybe run an inflate in the Y as well, just to kind of give you some shirt wrinkles, which you can then go through BCO for your cloth, oops, BCU for your cloth nudge brush. You can go through here. You can kind of nudge around these wrinkles. You can, oh, and also you can turn off expand and inflate while you're doing this. You can also hit W and you can like, uh, let's hit BT for brush transpose and C, BTC for transpose cloth. And now you can go through here and you can expand and then contract uh, in either direction to give yourself. Uh, you can either you know stick it very close to his body or you can kind of contract it in that direction to get you some lateral movement on these wrinkles. Now he doesn't have a very dynamic pose. If you wanted like dynamic wrinkles, ideally he'd have a dynamic pose that would drive those wrinkles and kind of tell that wrinkle story. Right now he's just kind of you know standing there in kind of a boring way, so you're probably gonna get boring wrinkles. Um, and you also probably want to turn off X symmetry. So while you're going through here and you're you know adding some wrinkles through here and you're using like expand and contract and push and pull and nudge to kind of go through here and get a, kind of get that look you're going for. Uh, you're getting, you know, kind of predictable results. And, and again, you can, if you want to, you can go down here to such a level one and get these big primary fold wrinkles or keep it at such a level two. The more geometry you have, the more, if you hit control D or divide one more time, the more uh, wrinkle or the more geometry you'll have in order to get, you know, more and more wrinkles. So you can go through here, and again, you can kind of fine tune. Let's go in here to brush cloth slide, and that's going to kind of bubble out a little bit. Maybe brush cloth move. And you can also, we do have that smooth subdiv on. So here's, if we turn this down to zero, that's our actual geometry. We are doing a smooth subdiv preview on here. So that is softening uh, our overall look. So you can go through here. And again, if we want to, we can you know, contract with our collision volume back on and slowly start pulling those wrinkles in a bit. And then you can always go back in here, get your deformation polished by features. And again, just keep refining this shirt as needed.